Doppler has different ways um, of um, being presented on your screen. Uh, and they are um, color flow mapping, which you've probably seen, power Doppler and spectral Doppler. So this is kind of a Venn diagram of how all these things overlap. Um, so they're, they're sort of um, three different ways that it can be displayed on your screen. Um, spectral Doppler just means in a graph form. Obviously, color flow mapping is where we see um, the color overlaid onto the gray image, um, onto the gray scale, scale image. Um, power Doppler is where we're looking very similar to color flow mapping, actually. But the only difference is with color flow mapping, we can see the direction of the flow. So um, we can see if the flow is towards the probe or away from the probe, um, whereas power Doppler just looks at flow. Um, and for that reason, because it eliminates the directionality of it, it's much more sensitive. So it can look at very, very small vessels. So um, it's particularly good at looking at kidney vessels or very, very tiny vessels. So really, really useful for that. And then we have continuous wave Doppler or pulse wave Doppler, which is how these um, display images are generated. So we can either have um, pulsed wave Doppler where essentially one crystal, one piezoelectric crystal in your uh, ultrasound probe uh, emits a, a sound signal, hits whatever is flowing and comes back to the probe and is um, sensed by the, the same signal. So it knows exactly how far away it hit um, that and, and, and came back to the probe. So therefore it can put the color um, on the screen exactly where that happened. And that's what happens with color flow mapping because you can see it overlaid on the grayscale image and you can see it on um, power Doppler as well, exactly the right spot where it happens. You can also see it on spectral Doppler. So <coughs> pulse wave Doppler, shown in a graphical form. So that's why we've got that overlap there. The other way of generating a Doppler image is continuous wave Doppler. And this is where you have one crystal, piezoelectric crystal, that is continuously emitting um, a, a, a sound wave along a specific line. So a very, very specific point, but um, all the way down the image. And then there's another crystal, which is continuously receiving feedback from that um, specific line. Um, and the advantage with doing this, um, obviously this can only be shown as spectral Doppler, so it's all only shown as a graph. Um, but the advantage with doing that is um, that you can reach really high velocities. So it's used a lot in uh, echocardiography because you can hit really hot, fast uh, velocities. And I'll show you on the next slide sort of why that happens. Okay, so this uh, little car with its wheels turning is sort of to des describe to you what happens with pulsed wave um, Doppler. So when you are looking at the wheels, sometimes it looks like they stop and restart or maybe even going backwards. And this is because our eyes um, are not um, receiving a continuous um, wave. What we're, what we're getting is sort of frames and we're seeing frames um, um, very, very quickly after each other, but it's not a continuous view we're getting of that wheel. And so depending on how fast the wheel is turning, um, those fr that frame rate can really affect how we're interpreting that moving image. Um, and that's why sometimes wheels look like they're um, really, really not moving at all maybe, or even moving backwards. And that um, limit where the speed of the turning of the wheel um, coincides with the um, frame rate of our eyes, if you like, is the, the Nyquist limit. And above that, you get aliasing where you start to see things backwards or you start to misinterpret things. Um, so, um, um, we were talking, uh, Laurie was talking about the Nyquist limit be being a 0.43. Really what we're talking about there is the velocity and has that reached the Nyquist limit. So obviously we want the um, image to be showing the truth because what happens when we, when we can see this wheel going backwards on 
um, color flow mapping, that might be that it starts to show red where it should have been showing blue um, and even might look turbulent um, when actually there is flow, it's just very fast and um, we, we need to adjust that. So when we're thinking about putting color flow back mapping on, these are the things that we should be thinking about. So first of all, before you're actually putting the probe on the animal, I would encourage you to switch on color flow mapping with your probe just pointing into the air. Then reducing your color gain. So there's a gain button for your color flow mapping. Sometimes that is your, the same button as your overall gain, but when you've got color flow mapping on, it becomes your color gain. Um, other machines have a separate color gain button, so just be aware of that. And you basically, you, you turn it up until there's lots of artifacts being seen. So despite it not being on an animal or not having contact with anything, and it's just in the air, you will get a little artifact. And then what you want to do is turn it down until just until the artifact isn't seen. That is your optimal gain. So you're not, you know, you're not seeing any artifact, um, but you, you've got the opti optimal gain that you can achieve. The next thing you want to do is optimize your grayscale image like we've been doing. So first of all, for the area you're focused on, you want to think about your depth, frequency, focal zone, gain, time gain compensation. These are super, super important when you're thinking about color flow mapping because you are asking a lot of your machine to be able to put that color flow mapping on. And it will um, really, really struggle if you've got far too much information. So if you've got a really, really deep image, it's going to really struggle to create that whole image as well as color Doppler. Um, and you'll see on some machines, there is a de slight decrease in um, how good the image quality is when you switch on color flow mapping. So especially on those machines, you really want to optimize your image as good as possible for that area you're interested in. The other thing that you can help with that um, is making sure your sector chart size is as small as possible. So um, basically the triangle that you're seeing on your screen, you can make that as narrow as possible over. Um, and that's usually uh, called a sector size or um, angle. It can sometimes be called as well um, or size. So have a look out for a button that says that. Do that when it, the grayscale image is on. And then once you've got your grayscale image optimized, you can switch on color flow mapping. You want to place your box um, over the area of interest. You can use your trackball to that to do that and then adjust your box size to as small as possible. Um, again, this is about how much um, you're asking of your machine. Um, and this is often possible by uh, a, an adjust and set button, which is usually around the trackball and then using your trackball to adjust the size. And, and the shape of it sometimes, um, and then setting it again. And then finally, to do with that velocity and the Nyquist limit, you want to set the velocity as high as possible um, so that we don't get that um, aliasing. So it, we don't get that artifact of it showing the wrong direction. Um, um, and so you want the velocity set as high as possible where you're still getting a good image because if you set it just as high as high as it will go um, and you're looking at small vessels with low velocity you it's not going to pick it up so you do need to adjust to what you're looking at and the velocity so there's no set um set it at this specific number you need to be looking at what um what you've got on your screen OK, and then finally, just to remember with um, color flow mapping is that um, you will get blue and red color um, and blue is any movement away from the probe and red is any movement towards the probe. So remembering the acronym BART, blue away, red towards, can help you re remember that. And it's nothing to do with uh, the type of vessel, whether it's an artery or a vein. It's all to do with direction away from the probe or towards the probe. Um, some machines will have variants on as well, which is a green color, and that can just um, sometimes help you see um, if there's any turbulence, for example.